Welcome everyone to our conversations with the editor session here at the Virtual Propane Expo. I'm Brian Richardson. I'm the editor of LP Gas Magazine. Also like to thank the Virtual Propane Expo for giving us this opportunity to talk with industry members. The June issue of LP Gas, we always give a, an added safety focus to, to that month and we thought it only made sense to bring in a panel here of industry members who could talk about safety. It's such an important topic, obviously, and it's always one of the most requested topics by our readers of the magazine. So joining me today, making up our panel, is Greg Knoll. He's the Executive Vice President of the Propane Marketers Association of Kansas. Hello, Greg. Hello. Thanks for having me. We have Dan Richardson, who's the President and CEO of Conger LP Gas in Tifton, Georgia. Hi. How are you, Brian? Doing, doing pretty well. We have Mike Walters, who is the Vice President of Safety and Fleet at Superior Energy Systems in Columbia Station, Ohio. How are you doing, Mike? Morning. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. We have a, a list of questions to go through here, you know, for the panel. And I think you can never have too much safety information in our industry. And maybe I'll just start off here with a question for Dan, being a propane retailer in Georgia. Dan, can you just maybe start out by saying how Conger LP Gas approaches safety, you know, as far as your processes in order to keep both your employees and your customers safe. Well, for us as a retailer, it's a top priority. A few years ago, at one time, I was like most marketers in that uh, everybody wore a lot of different hats. We're not a large marketer, but we have about 30 employees. But we, I realized we needed to make the decision to have a dedicated person on safety. So we made that move because it's that important to us. You know, unfortunately, sometimes you have in marketers who will sacrifice safety for profits. Uh, they think they're making the right decision. And that's very short-sighted. Uh, here at our, in our company, it's very important that everybody receive training. We don't, if we have a new employee, they do not go out until we're fully satisfied that they know what they're doing. We have mentorship along with training that we do. And until they complete that and we're satisfied that they understand what we're doing and how important uh, safety is, because all we need, you know, in this business is very important that we remember all we, all we need sometimes is one we're one accident away, and we need to keep that in the back of our minds uh, about being safe for both employees and customers. Great. Maybe turn the attention over to Greg as far as, you know, a state executive association leader. You know, how does an association like PMAC, Greg, you know, facilitate safety and training in the industry? Thank you for asking. I, I, I had about 30 years of experience in retail before I became involved at the state level here with our association with our state perk. I was the founding chairman of the state perk. And one of the things that we did in 2003, I believe, we established the need for an educational program. I quickly realized that my job where I was employed at was going to be phased out. So I positioned myself to take over that position as education director for the association and in the state perk, Ken Perk. So, you know, we haven't had the experience of being in retail and knowing how vital it was to have proper training for everyone, not just for some. I carried that experience into the position as director of education. And we quickly fell in line with other states that used the uh, program offered by the National Association, which was um, CTEP, Certified Employee Training Programs. Best thing we did, uh, we, we've had updates, we've been able to utilize what they have offered all these years, and it continues to be an excellent educational tool. We recently, because of COVID-19, we implemented a blended learning process, and that was very well received because of the limited meetings we could have. But bottom line is that propane safety is so vitally important for every propane employee, and we feel that CTEP provides us that training that we need at the state level. Mike, with the Superior Energy Systems, you know, does the approach to safety change at all? Just because, you know, what you're doing is a little bit different there with your manufacturing auto gas dispensers, you're installing plants. Do you have a different approach to safety? What's your take on that? Well, yes, you're absolutely right. And you hit the nail on the head when it's a little bit different and it's a unique, you know, like, like Greg was saying, after about 28 years in the retail industry, 
I came into this and got my feet planted in the midstream and in the industrial sector and in construction and being a, a EPC contractor, superior energy systems, engineering, procurement and construction is a little bit unique. With people running all over the globe, basically, it's difficult to manage a safety program. So the only way you can really do this is through culture, right? And teaching everyone that their personal safety is their responsibility. You know, stop. If you see something you don't understand, and stop, call somebody and get advice as to what you should do or what action you should take. Basically, it's all about culture in this. Understand that SES, we have to abide by not only the same things retail industry does, 54, 58, and all that, uh, 49 CFR, but we also have the construction standard, which becomes very cumbersome sometimes when you get into all the topics that are in OSHA 1926. The total recordable incident rate here at SES for a number of years, probably six, eight years, has been zero. So we do, we do everybody's paying attention, everybody's doing a good job. And uh, again, it's all about culture. Mike, I know you and I have talked a little bit about, you know, the project that you're working on at PERC. Can you just, you know, shed a little bit of light on that? You know, what, what your role is there with some of their initiatives as it relates to safety and training? Well, without getting long-winded about this, I guess the only thing that'd be safe to say is we're in the middle of a project, essentially, to do what I've been calling a re-engineering of education in the industry. We understand that we have four generations of the industry working today and within the industry. We have an aging workforce. We have new generations coming in. So what we're doing is we're transforming the large, cumbersome textbook delivery of programs into a modularized, function-based, training program so that universal to the industry, people within the industry can pick and choose what they, employers can pick and choose what they need to train their people in and not have to be subject to a lot of information that doesn't apply to what they do. Now that's it in a nutshell. Obviously, you know, COVID's changed a lot of things across industries and, you know, it's really influenced how we approach safety in the propane industry. But just curious, you know, what you all think of, you know, COVID's influence on the propane industry, you know, how have we changed? What have we learned and and what does the future look like in our industry, maybe based on the impacts of COVID? I think Mike hit something on the head a while ago. I like the way he said that, where he brought in the word culture for us, that is we had already tried to establish a culture and feel, I feel like we have, but what COVID did for us is all of our people on a daily basis, it really hammered into them about their safety. You know, you're talking about health safety, but that is part of it. And just how they go about things every day, how they deal with customers, how they deal with with just everything that we handle. Hopefully that will continue. You know, one of the things that we do here that we really stress, and again, I thank Mike for mentioning that word culture a while ago. If you come in to work with us, we feel that training is essential, not only just for your drivers, for your service techs, but if you're up front and you deal with any customer, we probably put you in other training courses that we have because we want you to understand the basics of what propane is, how to handle it, what to expect. So if a customer calls in and the CSR answers, the customer, they have a basic good knowledge of how to talk to the customer about, you know, if, they're, if they call in for a leak or they smell gas, how to handle that until we can get someone who's even more qualified on the phone with them. But COVID really has, is, uh, again, hammering what Mike says, culture about every day, everything that you do is safety related. 
Greg, how about for your members then? What are you hearing? What are you seeing as far as COVID's influence on, on the industry in Kansas? Sure. It, it absolutely caught, forced everyone, marketers, uh, offices, er, everyone in our industry changed the way of conducting business daily because of restrictions. We had to look at all of our educational programs and come up with something. We couldn't take a year off. We still had new hires. We still had new employees that needed training. And with the assistance of our director of education, who had been in the business for many years and uh, is still involved with us here today, he came up with a plan to implement the same training, but do it online, do it virtually uh, as much as possible, and then gather when we were able to gather to, to review and test with CTEP testing. It worked well. It forced us to step outside the box and think outside the box. We, with the, with the assistance and cooperation of all the marketers in our state who needed to get training for their new employees, we had terrific, awesome response and support. And um, honestly, we're looking at doing a similar effort to try and, and get to the people that can't come to our training center to get trained to where we can actually have them included in, uh, in some type of fashion so that they can take part in the training and, and have, be successful when, when needed to take the test. So we're still thinking outside that box, but, but after a year of practice, we've gotten pretty good at what we're doing now. And Mike, you know, your take on a global pandemic's influence over the propane industry, what do you see at Superior Energy Systems? Well, you know, it's very interesting because when the pandemic hit, of course, you know, every, it caused everybody to take a step back and, and pay attention, of course. I think Greg hit it very well. It forced us into the electronic age that we didn't, ever, you know, I mean, for years and years, this conversation has been going on about virtual learning and all that kind of stuff. And everybody's, well, yeah, we want to do that. Yeah, we want to do that. Yeah, we want to do that. But nobody's willing to pull the trigger. Is the willing, is the industry willing to accept? Now, all of a sudden, absolutely, right? It forced us into the electronic age. Now at SES, what happened? Was it, you know, because the industry was considered essential and the retail industry had significant issues relative to going in people's houses and things like that. At SES, we really didn't have that because most of what we do is outside, right? Tank farms and, and systems and, and all that. Was it business as usual? No, we made certain adjustments, but I don't think the business ever really slowed all that much uh, because we continued to do what we had to do to keep the infrastructure running in, in this country. You know, did we do make adjustments? Yes, face masks and personal protective equipment of all kinds, sanitation, paying attention to people's health, absolutely. But did it really slow us down all that much? I'm not really sure that it did, but it certainly has made us, as an entire industry, take a step back and say, what's the future really look like you know, how do we utilize this to our advantage? You know, a month or so ago, we were talking about how does these Zoom calls fit into the future, right? Remember, that was one of the questions for the, for the board. And it, 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 well, I think it's here to stay. Now, will we use it as much as we did? Because in-person is still important, but I think there's advantages to it. I think there's places that we can do it that makes sense. And as far as education, it's forcing us into the electronic era there as well. And that's all good stuff. Dan, can you give me a philosophy, I guess, as far as safety that you really you know, abide by, that the company abides by, that might give our, our readers, our viewers something to consider? I guess I would, I would say by giving you an example. And again, I'm going to hammer the work culture going back. I think that was really good that Mike said that a while ago. Our guys went out on a job not too long ago, and when they went out, they saw some things involving another contractor that was on the job. They came back and they said, we just didn't feel safe. And it could have meant, you know, a good, you know, we could have made a good profit off of it. Instead, we backed out on that project, and I called the guy up and I said, look, you know, you have some 
safety issues and until you can and until you can resolve some of those with the other contractor i said we're not coming back i outlined them to them to him and um think he appreciated them but i was really proud of our guys they looked at it they didn't just say well you know we're sent out to do a job we're going to go ahead and make this work no they knew what they should do they were trained properly and they, uh, you know, when something was not right, they didn't put themselves in harm's way. They didn't put others in harm's way. If you want to, if you want to hire good people, one of the ways you show them that you appreciate them is you take their safety and their family's safety into consideration and make sure that they are properly trained and properly instructed. They know what they're doing safety-wise on the job. Yeah, that had to be pretty satisfying, pretty rewarding for you to, to see how your, your employees handle that situation. Greg, how about a safety philosophy? What, what's something that you really have emphasized over the years? Yeah, you know, I, when I took over it, uh, as director of education in 2004, I, I can tell you that the, the most common statement that I heard at the time, and even today, is we don't have time to send people for training. We don't have time to do this. And my reply then, and still is, you can't afford not to. It's so important. You have to dedicate yourself to it. You have to dedicate your employees to it. Allow us to help you get to where you need to go. And the only way we can do that is to use a, a program like CTEP to provide training so that everyone gets a baseline of safety information. So as Dan said, they know what to do when they go out to a location. To, to perform the tasks that need to be done. Uh, it's, it's worked well for us. Um, I've always said, you don't have time not to do it. And I will always say that. Safety is first and it should always be first in our industry. Mike, you talked about, you know, culture, you know, what has to happen to create that culture? You know, what's that philosophy, those, you know, that underlying point that a company has to have to build that culture? Uh, it, that, that's a good question. I think that uh, Dan and Greg hit it on the head, but I'll expand that by saying it's all about mindset, right? I don't know, 28 some odd years ago when I made the transition from retail management to safety, you know, we used to go out and do these inspections, audits, if you will. And it was all about it seemed like the mindset of the industry was compliance and equipment, right? You've got, you're in compliance with the various codes and standards, 54, 58, 49, whatever. And then you've got good working equipment, you're safe, right? So we do these compliance audits. And one day I woke up and I'm really tipping the hand here, but I woke up one day and I looked at myself in the mirror and I said to myself, wait a minute, you're going to die. What's this all about? You're a propane guy in a safety position, right? You better do something about this, figure out what the safety thing is really all about, or you're never going to survive this. So I did, and I started to look at, get some publications, join some associations, you know, get involved with, with things. And it didn't take long, you know, a couple weeks, couple months. And I really, then the light went on. Safety is about the people. It's about the decisions they make, the positions they put themselves in. Now, what helps you get there? Training helps you get there. The culture that teaches them why, what if, what happens if I don't? Why are you telling me this? Yeah, you know how people are. Yeah, right, right. Until you build ownership, and say, you know, here's what happens if you don't do this. If you take a pump apart, you might get a surprise, right? If you want to take a trans, I tell the people this in my classes all the time. If you want to take a transmission apart and see how it works, fine, have at it. You take a propane system apart to see how it works and you don't know what you're doing, you might get a surprise you don't want to have, right? So if stop. If you see something you don't understand and you don't know how, Call somebody that can help you through it, get some training, you know, stuff like that. So the reality is safety is about the people, right? And the culture and getting them to make decisions to either do it right 
or stop and call for help. See what I'm saying? So that's my philosophy on safety. It's about the people. And, and the compliance, yeah, you got to comply. It's the law. You got to have good working equipment. Hey, that's just common sense. But safety in, in and of itself is about the people and their decisions and their mindset and everything that they do is what keeps them safe. Isn't up to me, the safety guy, right? Isn't up to company. Company has to provide a safe workplace. That doesn't mean you're safe. That means you have to take that and work safely. See what I'm saying? So that's my philosophy. Mike, you said, you know, it's a good uh, thing to keep in mind. Call someone as far as, you know, a next step or what to do to stay safe. Dan and Greg, I mean, do you have a, a quick hitting message, I guess, for for propane marketers as far as uh, what to do in a certain situation? I, I would agree, again, with going back to what Mike said. I don't know how many times I've called someone and said, here's the situation, you know, like a Johnny Patrick, some friends I have at Propane Resources, others around. Call someone who knows who have done it. I would add a little something to what Mike said just then. As a CEO and owner, it's got to start I realize with our company, it's got to start with me. If I don't set the tone from the top down, I can have the best safety people in the world. But if I don't back them, if I don't, if, if our employees don't see that I think it's important, then they'll listen to our safety people and they'll say, yeah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And here you go. I know as, as the top that I have to set the tone. I have to set the culture. Greg, how about you, uh, a final message to leave with propane marketers, something to keep in mind as far as their actions with safety? Yep. You know, one, one of the things that I was taught, uh, I had very little tra official training. I had on-the-job training for, for several years. But when I came into this office and took over, my theory was, if you're not qualified, don't do it. So many times during the trainings that we offered, if you're in doubt of how to do something, don't do it fall back to someone who has the experience. And if nothing else, call this office, call me personally. I always shared my cell phone with every student. And I still take calls from people that I trained 10, 12, 14 years ago. They know that if I can help them, I will. We make ourselves available 24 seven, just as though we were in the propane business. And it's a resource that we are willing to share in, in order to make things safe for the customers and especially for the employees. We'll, we'll continue to do that as long as I'm here. Very good. Looks like we're out of time, guys. I really appreciate the time here. Some good messages and thoughts to, to uh, our readers, our viewers to take with them. Appreciate that time and, and those, those messages. And if anyone has any questions about this session, feel free to reach out to me, 216-706-3748. Again, appreciate the Virtual Propane Expo for this opportunity. Hope everyone has a great day. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank us. you for your time. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.